too. Beverly and I are on our honeymoon in Los Angeles. It had to be Los Angeles because between the war and our finances, a trip to Paris was right out of the question. Thankfully, John Houston was kind enough to give us a free four-day stay at the Los Angeles Biltmore. There we ate our fill of room service and consecrated our marital bed. Actually, we consecrated it a lot. Not, not to put too fine a point on it, we did more consecrating than a priest during Easter Mass. So anyway, on our third day there, I'm getting dressed while Beverly is freshening up in the uh, powder room. And I hear this knock on the door and a voice crying out, room service. I tell them to come in and this tall, pale gentleman wheels in this cart filled with covered plates and a chilled bottle of champagne. I pull out my wallet to give him a tip and look up to see him pointing a luger directly at me. And in an oddly familiar German drawl, he said, Good to see you again, Herr Leidecker. And I realize it's Karl Kreschmar, one of the German spies I helped capture in the 30s. Now I need to backtrack for a second. Back in the 30s, this World War I vet by the name of Leon Lewis organized a group of private citizens to infiltrate pro-Nazi groups that were popping up in Hollywood. And together they managed to foil a Nazi plot to assassinate prominent Jewish entertainment figures. Well, I was part of that group and I helped finger Kreshmar to the feds, but he escaped to Germany before he could be arrested. And now he was back in America sporting a very nasty facial scar. Now I mustered all the moxie that I could and I looked him straight in the eye and said, what's the matter, Carl? Got yourself shaving? He sneered and said, it's an unpleasant souvenir from my trip back to Germany, but rest assured you will soon look much worse. He points the gun directly at my head, and he says, By the way, Miss Riefenstahl sends her regards, and I promised her that never again would you soil a German womb with your mongrel seed. But before he could fire, Beverly bounced out of the bathroom, smashes him in the face with a bottle of my old spice, I grab a bottle of champagne, and I whack him across the old coconut. Anyway, I get him down to the ground and tie him up. Beverly goes to the phone, calls the police. But when she gets off the phone, she looks me directly in the eye and says, You fucked Lenny Riefenstahl? Anyway, after the police drag Carl away, I explain to Beverly what happened with Lenny, explaining that I did not know at the time she was Lenny Riefenstahl, but just thought she was a German redhead with great calves. I then had to gently remind her that she once had a one-night stand with Errol Flynn, to which she replied, Yep, yeah, but Errol Flynn's not a Nazi. To which I had to reply, I'll be honest, I've heard rumors. But in the end, we agree that any past indiscretions on our part really didn't matter. The point was we were together now, and we were going to be together for the rest of our lives. And then we consecrated our marital bed again. Twice. <laughs>